In this video, I'm going to show you seven of the best ways to strengthen up your low back. Now, this is more specifically for those of you who might have a little bit of pain in your low back. It's not always there, but it's kind of always there. Maybe it's not really flared up in the moment right now, and your back is feeling kind of okay, and you want some things to do to strengthen up your low back so that it doesn't hurt again. Stick around. I got seven different ways for you, for you to get your back strong. I'm going to show you easy to hard to medium to simple. We're going to start at the easiest place and we're going to build up. So follow along. If the beginning ones are too easy for you, stick around. Those end ones are going to be where we're going to get our most, the most results, I think. This is the Anatomy of Therapy. I'm Dr. John Sabolsky, focusing again today. As a doctor, I give patients programs all the time. For things to help their back to help their pain today this is almost a post probably the end part of a treatment you know your back maybe hurts a little bit but you can pretty much function and do what you need to do um, and i'll say look these are the seven things i wish you would work on so that you can stay out of my office and stay out of back pain okay so some of these uh, are going to be easy and we'll kind of build in what we're doing and make them a little bit more challenging so that we can progress and then I'll give you the little bit of tips and tricks and te techniques exactly how to make these work and then why they work. So not only are we going to learn a bunch of stretches today, we're also going to learn what they're doing to our backs, how to make our backs stronger. So uh, I'm going to start to cover almost the whole back from the low back to the upper back. But we're mostly talking about low back and kind of mid back stuff. The first one I would say that you need to do is this active hip flexor stretch. So you're in an all fours position here. Legs are at about 90 degrees. And then you're just going to reach this arm back for the opposite foot. Very simply done. This is a really easy movement. You just reach back. Now what you're doing is as you lean back, you are stretching out the front of this hip more so there's a crossing line from that hip then crosses the body and goes this way. So one of the main ways that the body works is an alternating form. When you walk, one arm goes forward and the other leg alternates backwards, right? Everything should alternate. That's how the body balances itself out. That is how we're going to start. So it's going to open up your hip flexors, which is a part that gets stuck typically when we sit all day. So we need to undo sitting. This is a, just a, a great way to open up your hips, a very simple way, and then repetitiously. So we're opening up the front of the hips and we repetitiously lean back and forward and lean back and forward. There's a, a progressed one where you're up on kind of on your toe. It's more of a lunge and you're actively reaching back. That's a progression from this, but really all we want to do is start with this one, reaching back. You can even if you want to, as you reach this arm back, you can go ahead and reach the opposite arm upwards. Um, <clears throat> also very helpful to get a stretch to the anterior side as we all, like me right now, are sitting kind of crunched forward, right? So this will help open up the anterior side of the body, unhinge here, and then basically begin to start to get to move our low back with the pressure on the anterior side. So you should feel the stretch kind of in the front of the thigh here, right? You may feel some of the abs and a little bit in the chest. So when you feel that tension or compression, we are decompressing this backside, right? So where you're feeling the tension. So we want to be able to move this back backwards while feeling the tension here in the anterior side so that we have a balanced system. So you're gonna do this on both sides, um, 10 sets of 10. You know, do a bunch. You got to do a bunch of these. If you do half, I'll be very proud of you. Okay, this is the second one. This is the 90-90 exercise with a shin box. So we're also going to talk about hip extension. Uh, so one of the things about strengthening your back is that you need to keep a strong base in your back, right? The base of your back is your hips. Everybody knows this. Lift with the hips. Bend at the knees, right? Don't lift with your back. So if you're going to use your hips, you need to be able to control the movement of your hips. And this also goes along with the alternating action. We talked about how one hip should go in, one leg goes out, the alternating idea, right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit, we're holding a weight in front so that we can keep our torso upright. And then we go over and then push those hips forward. So this leg is an internal rotation, this leg is an external rotation, and we are creating a nice stable base for the back. Then we're gonna alternate the base of the back the opposite way so you see now we're twisting the hips around this way and we're making sure that our back is stable in this twisted position. The other thing I want you to work on is the transfer between the two, right? So make it kind of look nice and smooth. Go slow and then bring yourself all the way up. Go slow, 
bring yourself all up. There's usually a piece somewhere in the middle where as the knees are going, there'll be a, just a big jump. You want to feel some continuity as your legs are going back and forth. So you'll feel little hitches where your back will feel a little bit unstable because we're changing the direction, the base of the hips. But if you can get these hips nice and stable going this way, nice and stable going the opposite way, you can create a great stable base for strengthening your lower back. And at the very end, this is where you really should feel it in, your ba in the back. Stay up tall, push those hips forward. You'll feel a good kind of contraction here in the low back, right? So the first one, we're just kind of getting some action, extending the low back muscle and opening up the anterior side. The second one, we're creating a different base for our hips so that our back can twist, rotate, extend up. And then as it goes back, you your back flexes forward and then it has to rotate the opposite way and then come back up. So this way you're literally unwinding your back as you do this uh, over and over and over again. Really work on cleaning up and making one side feel like the other. You can balance yourself out. Uh, okay, so the next one. Uh, this is a little bit better if you you need to have a band for this one, uh, which is pretty easy. Or if you're, you're in the gym, you've gone back to the gyms, you can use one of those rowing machines, right? Those are perfect for this. But what you're gonna do is he has the legs bent, so we're gonna try to put more stress on the posterior chain, is we're trying to expand and put pressure into the back via the spine, okay? So you're gonna let your arms be pulled forward by the machine, right? You can, you're almost rounding your back, so we're creating space in the back, we're creating tension in the back with the creation of space and tension, that is strength. <laughs> so. You're gonna push and slowly roll back, especially right there. You're guiding the force between those shoulder blades and pushing back as these bands are pulling you forward, right? So you're getting that opposition. You're really pushing your sternum back, back, back in a way as those weights are pulling you straight forward, right? And you are going to feel a lot of tension back here. And then you're gonna take a couple deep breaths. You're gonna feel it stretch but you're also gonna be strengthening up this back as well. Because not only are you feeling a lot of tension here, what that means is that you're actually decompressing the lower back. So remember where the pressure is, every pressure is kind of alternating in the body. Um, where the pressure is up high, it's gonna be opposite down low, or anterior versus posterior. There's an alternating and reciprocating notion of pressure in the body. So if we create pressure here, we relieve pressure down here. And since this is on an elongated tension, you're gonna feel a great stretch up here and then secretly you're also stretching and strengthening your low back. You're gonna go all the way back and then you're just gonna kinda of come back forward. So the beginning position is you wanna round here. So the idea is that the angle of the most tension is gonna be along the line of the weights, right? So you're gonna to wanna to find the line of the weights and find the way to put the most tension through the back, the upper back. This will give you broader shoulders, uh, this will give you stronger shoulders, and then it'll all help you breathe through your back, which is huge. People don't do that often enough. Okay, so we're going forward. Let me show you then how to go backwards. Stick around. I'm gonna show you by the end of this video, basically your back should look like this, right? If you haven't hit the like button and you're still listening, please hit the like button. We've got a podcast, we've got a Patreon below. Let's get through this next one. Okay, so now we worked on flexion before uh, in this guy, right? But now we're working on extension. So extension is going backwards, flexion is going forwards, right? So we need the back to be strong going forwards and backwards. We're trying to cover as many of the angles as we can today. So now in extension, the main pressure is going to be this weight that is up over our head. We have a leverage point right here under the shoulder blades. So we're maximizing the extension and we're really opening up the front. You should feel a lot of tension on the front and then you'll feel a lot of tension in this upper back. So then again, that makes this low back decompressed again, right? Okay. So you're getting the weight. It's just a simple lap pullover. There's really nothing crazy about it except that you're really letting these hips go down so that you can create this extension, right? That is the big trick. You're gonna get a lot of good stretch here in the lats. This is gonna be mostly, a, it, it is a lat pullover, right? But we're just adding the added element of a secondary benefit to the spine, specifically being strong in extension versus strong in flexion, which we have. This is gonna be strong in extension. This one is going to be extension, this is flexion there, so you can see there's flexion at the hips there, but then we go into a neutral position, maybe a little bit of extension, but not much. 
So now we're going full extension and we're gonna try to get the most extension through the thoracic spine. That is where there are 12 segments in the thoracic spine and they should extend, even just mathematically speaking, far more than the lumbar spine, right? There's only five little pieces of the lumbar spine. I think they're descending in extension. It's like one degree, two degree, three degree, three degree, whatever. Uh, in the thoracic spine, the majolk, the majolk, the majority or the bulk of extension should happen through there, the majolk. Okay, don't edit, don't edit it out. Okay, on to the next one. Uh, in the next one, this is a seated good morning from knees over the toes guy. And what you're gonna do is get a lightweight, not much, this is probably a 25 pound bar, by the way. Uh, that's actually pretty heavy. It's probably got two tens on there, two fives on there. Not that heavy, but you're bringing your back down. We're gonna stabilize at the hips. So you're getting this extension in the back. And then as you go down, those low back muscles are gonna have to pick you back up. Now, one of the things that happens when you sit is that our legs get a little weak and they start to fall in or they fall out. So we'll cross our legs one way or the other. This exercise, we're gonna be focusing on keeping our legs wide so that we attack the adductor muscles. We'll strengthen the adductor muscles on the inside of the leg as he goes down. And what is his point of support? It's these femurs, it's this low back, and then he's gonna have to raise himself <coughs> back up, go down and go back up. So this is a great exercise for the low back especially, but having you in a seated position is also gonna make it a stretch for the hips <coughs> and it's gonna be a strengthening for the back. That's a coffee cup with a cat on it. So, you know I'm serious about my exercise. Anyways, strengthening the adductors while strengthening the low back muscles. Okay, so these last ones are all good mornings. This is the seated good morning. This is a little bit nicer. You can do this without the weight. It helps to have a little bit of weight on your back. Um, but ultimately, you're gonna wanna get to, like I said, standing. These are standing good mornings. If you're committed to getting your back a lot stronger, you're going to have to load it up and you're gonna have to teach it proper mechanics. By proper mechanics, I mean 90 degree angles like that, right? Shins exactly almost straight up, controlling the tension through the hamstrings and through the low back with two plates on the back. I mean, you're going to have to have a strong back you're going to have a disciplined, tight low back. These are the erector spinae muscles that are on the side of the, the, the spine. They keep the spine erect. And you need to keep your spine erect as you bend all the way down. You go to about a 90 degree angle. I mean, the hips are already kind of back, so that's, that's 90 to me. You're gonna get a lot of tension on the hamstrings. You're gonna get a lot of strength in the back. Basically, you wanna strengthen the entire posterior chain. Now, one little tweak, and this is the last thing we're gonna go over, is that you need to do this one side at a time because we've talked about how your back is not even. We know that we're addressing some of the asymmetries from the very beginning of this exercise, right? Going backwards, we're addressing obviously asymmetries in this little guy here, right? This guy is more flexion, this guy is more straight extension, so it's not straight asymmetries, but we wanna start by addressing asymmetries, go after flexion, go after extension, and then we're going to strengthen up going down, flexing, and extending. So once we've got the ranges of motion, we then use them and add load. We can add it seated, then we can start to add it standing. This is Simeon Panda. This dude is my superhero. And then, to make sure that we keep them absolutely symmetrical, you load them under the asymmetry. So this is almost a, the, the same kind of plan that I would give to any patient. It's a thorough way to address asymmetries in the joints below the back and above the back and the thoracic spine. So like I said, this is addressing more of the thoracic spine. This is addressing more of the hips. This is definitely addressing the hips, addressing the hips in an asymmetrical way, in a flexion way, in an extension way, and then adding load. This is the same kind of program that we would give to any kind of patient as they were going through pain. I hope this helps you. I know I said a lot. Feel free to leave comments below and ask questions. These are some of the best ways to strengthen your backup. It's a great program, a great series. Find where you fit into the series. Don't force it. Uh, go through these movements slow. And this is an investment over time. So strengthen up your back. Think about these as compounding, as having compounding effects on your back moving forward into the future. These are great exercises for the now, but think about bulletproofing your back for six months from now, from a year from now. That's what these kind of exercises are to bulletproof your back 
for the future. Smash the like button. Leave a comment. Hit subscribe. Y'all the best. Peace. Have a great day.